Okay. Um, good morning, uh, good afternoon, or good evening, everyone, depending on where in the world you're situated. And um, welcome to the G Shift Client Success webinar series. Uh, this is the third installment in our series. Um, we certainly hope uh, you enjoy uh, listening along and uh, perhaps learn something today. Um, just a couple of logistical items off the top. Uh, this webinar is being recorded and will be made available to all invitees at a later date and accessible as well in the G-Shift resources section. Um, if you have any questions at all during the session, uh, please feel free to type them in in the GoToWebinar chat window and I'll certainly do my best to answer them all near the uh, end of the session today. Um, but I do have a lot of content to cover, um, which again, I hope you all uh, look forward to hearing. And uh, so I'm going to, uh, to proceed. Um, obviously today the subject or the topic of our discussion is making smarter SEO and content marketing decisions with G-Shift data. Um, as for myself, um, my name is Jeff Riddell. I'm actually the very first G-Shift Client Success Manager and uh, don't mind even taking credit for uh, having uh, come up with the title, uh, believe it or not. Um, I've uh, a little over 10 years experience in, in web marketing, um, so certainly do think I have some, uh, some experience in terms of, uh, of online marketing, um, SEO, and, uh, and all things uh, sort of content marketing. Um, I'm a journalism major, uh, a blogger, and if you ask anybody in my family something of a social media addict, uh, and yes, as you can see by my attire there on the right, uh, I'm also a, a devoted hockey dad. Um, certainly you can find me anywhere um, on, uh, on social media. There's some of my contact info there. Uh, a few places you, you might expect to find me, and uh, you'd likely find me elsewhere as well. Um, in terms of today's agenda, um, looking to identify or uh, walking through a couple of different items. Um, ident first off, identifying and focusing on high value keywords, um, then looking at dealing with Google's not provided, um, which is the uh, uh, frustration for I know a lot of, uh, a lot of marketers out there. Uh, focusing on optimizing the right content. Uh, we'll take a look at social keywords and uh, social content research for those who are, are looking for other avenues to extend uh, either your or your client's web presence. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about mining relevant backlink sources and where you can find that data within, within G-Shift. And then uh, near the end, what's new and exciting in G-Shift? We do have uh, something of an announcement we'd like to, uh, to share with you, so we'll pass that along. Um, ultimately, what I'd like to uh, have accomplished by the end of today's session is uh, to, to help you better find the data that you need to make meaningful web presence optimization decisions. So this will be a combination of um, looking first at, again, uh, each of these items and then identifying with, where within the software uh, you can find the answers and the data you're looking for. So let's jump in. Um, actually, first off, for those of you who don't know, um, G-Shift itself, uh, what we, we're ultimately striving to accomplish is making it simple for for brands and for agencies uh, and their brands, their clients to be massively discovered in an increasingly social and mobile world. Um, we're now processing literally billions of data points over 10,000 brands across 22 countries um, and um, you know, growing, uh, growing on, a, on a regular basis. So let's start uh, answering some questions. Um, the first being, which keywords? Which keywords should we as marketers or should we uh, as, as people who are looking to optimize a web presence be, uh, be following or, or ultimately be focusing on? Um, from a client success standpoint, we're dealing with, uh, with our existing clients, we really try to focus um, on a manageable number of keywords. Um, generally speaking, you know, my rule of thumb is anywhere from 10 to 20 primary keywords. Um, and, and the prim me primary reason for this is that with any given keyword, um, there, there's going to be a lot involved in terms of actually optimizing uh, a page or optimizing a piece of content. Um, there's going to be first off making sure that that page itself is optimized if it's a web page or if it's a blog post. Uh, but then above and beyond that, it, it's going to be about supporting um, and, and, and building the authority of that piece of content, whether it be through internal links from other content, either within your site or externally, 
um, it's going to be about looking perhaps build you know backlinks to that that content and so there's a number of of, uh, of things that that need to be done in terms of even just a single keyword and optimizing a piece of content or a single keyword so our our focus again and, and, and to make uh, make this a manageable process is really to try and stick to a core set of keywords now that's not to say that you might not follow a, a large number of keywords um, but ultimately pay attention to a again a focus group and what you might do within G shift is label those as, as favorites or you know for some clients you might even consider creating a separate presence around specific focus group of keywords so you can really kind of have a, a laser guided attention and, and over time those those keywords might likewise change as, as you see um, the effects of your optimization efforts either working or hopefully not not working um, you may find that you need to, to change up what those keywords are and you know swap in some some new keywords that that are more uh, that you're finding your clients are, are more readily being found for or are delivering the results in terms of organic traffic or or conversions that you're looking for um, so ultimately what we really like to recommend is that you find keywords for which the site pre or presence that you're following already has some momentum um, those keywords which you find your client has content that already resides on page one or page two of Google, um, because it's going to be a lot easier to produce results based on those keywords where there already is some momentum. Um, to give you an example, if, if you find uh, you know keyword uh, a keyword phrase where uh, the content or the client has a piece of content that sits, say you know in the eight, nine, or ten position on page one of Google, um, really focusing in on that keyword and working to get that piece of content moved up to you know either six seven eight or or, or five six seven or or lower you know into the top three on, on page one of google is going to be a lot easier than one that you know can't be found in the top 50 so starting from scratch effectively so again as far as focusing we we'd like to recommend that you start there start by finding those keywords where you have um, some content that already has some momentum but also, in addition to that, you, you need to find keywords that have a reasonable and relative monthly search volume, um, where we know that there are people actually searching for those keywords and that there's uh, you know, a higher probability that you're going to receive some of the traffic should you be able to get your client into that one, two, or three position. So to give you an example, um, we're using our, and if anybody's been through our, our, our sales process, as most of you probably have, you'll be familiar with um, our Barry Condo team web presence, which is our, our, our typical demo, um, demo web presence that we use. And so here we're looking again at the, uh, the Barry Condo uh, team presence. Um, we're specifically in the keywords and position section. Um, this is one of the primary areas in the uh, in the software uh, where you know, you know a lot of our clients spend their time or certainly should be spending their time. I mean, in terms of identifying again keywords that you really want to start with or focus on, um, the example here that I provided is Barry Condos for Sale. Um, the reason I provided this as an example of a keyword that would be a good one to pay attention to is it's currently sitting in the number four position, or we have a, a page, the home page, or a piece of content, the home page here which was previously now 30 days ago sitting in the number one position but currently this this uh, keyword we, we seem to have dropped down to number four um, that being said you know having been in the one position there's certainly potential to to get them back to get this page back there if we look to focus or build content around this keyword condos for sale and so again in terms of a starting point and a keyword we should really be be paying attention to um, you know, I would suggest condos for sale would would be a good one to uh, to start with. So that's that's an example of of how to identify or start to identify some some keywords that make sense. I suppose the other thing I should point out as well, and I I mentioned this in the last slide, is also looking at the search volume. So you know, among these keywords in this list, um, Barry Condos for Sale is the one that has the highest search volume, the highest potential for organic traffic. And again, I would therefore suggest that this would be a good one to to pay attention to. Now, with your clients, you again, might find that there's any one of a number of different um, keywords where there's a relatively good position or starting point. And those ones, again, that are either page one or page two um, that have a relatively high search volume would be the, uh, the place to really focus. So that's, uh, that's keywords. Um, now, once we've, uh, I suppose, oh, sorry, I <laughs> wasn't done with, quite done with keywords. The other um, piece I wanted to point to in terms of the software is, is keyword research itself. 
um, within uh, GShift in the keywords and research section, you'll see that you have a number of different options available um, to, do, uh, to do your keyword research. Um, right off the top, I'll point out that we have search volume, which is focused on the volume of search for the keywords that you're already following. Um, that's also reflected in the previous screen that I showed where um, you know, along with keyword positions, we'll, we'll provide where we have uh, search volume, uh, what search volume is available for that particular keyword. And again, here we'll, you know, we see that Barry Waterfront Condos um, for the, uh, the search engine chosen has a, has a search volume of 390 uh, searches per month. So again, you know, uh, among others down here, we'll see there's Barry Townhomes, which has a thousand. Now that may or may not be specific to the the, the, the products or services this client is, is uh, offering. So that may or may not be a good choice as far as a keyword to, to focus on. Um, but we definitely can you know, see here that, that very waterfront condos would be another, another good choice. Um, the other tools available in terms of keyword research, and I'll just go through these quickly, would be Google Analytics. Now, unfortunately, um, based on uh, Google's stance of, of not provided and not providing um, what keywords are driving organic traffic, um, uh, through search or via their secure search um, uh, stance. Um, there's not nearly as much a good keyword research available here as, as there was in the past. That being said, you can from time to find, time find nuggets uh, within this area, so that's uh, worth taking a look at. Um, the other, uh, which is actually the, uh, the tab that we're on right now, is related searches. Um, related searches are, are, is a very good option um, because what we're effectively looking at here are the related searches provided by Google based on the keywords uh, that you're currently following. So these aren't keywords that are currently in our followed list, but these are ones that are related to those keywords that we're following. And again, that's the reason why a, a good keyword like Barry Waterfront Condos comes up. Um, again, with a search volume of 390 would be, a, would be a good option. So if that's something we want to start following or put on our watch list, I would check that off and start to follow that keyword. Another more recent tool that's available um, to, uh, to clients is the Webmaster Tools, is a connection to Webmaster Tools. Um, this is going to provide um, some, some additional uh, keyword research, um, admittedly to be taken with a grain of salt, but there's also some, some, valid, uh, some valid keywords, some valid keyword possibilities there that you can, uh, you can take a look at. Uh, a couple of others um, that you might consider, um, Anchor Text. Um, Anchor Text is effectively the text that people are clicking on from um, either internally or externally from backlinks. Um, and more, most specifically, I would suggest you might take a look at competitors. Um, sometimes in looking at a, a competitor's anchor text, you can get a sense of what they're trying to optimize for. Now, this is assuming that they, they are um, cognizant of the importance of anchor text and are using it as a, a tool to try and optimize their, their backlinks or optimize the links coming into their site. Um, but there could be some, again, nuggets of, of, uh, of keywords there that you could add to your, your perspective list. So again, fair number of uh, keyword research tools available within the keywords research section. Um, jumping ahead then uh, onto the next topic, not provided. Um, unfortunately, the, the, um, increasingly the bane of many marketers' existence um, Google, as, as many of you probably already know, um, about a year ago uh, started um, uh, um, not providing uh, keywords that were being used through organic search. And, and soon, this is going to mean that few, if any, keywords from organic search will be, avail will be visible to us, uh, which obviously leaves a lot of marketers in, in a bit of a conundrum, not knowing exactly how people are searching or how people are finding content. Um, what we've done, G-Shift, is we've come up with a, uh, a tool, a secure search module, that effectively um, helps to identify some of the hidden keywords by understanding what known keywords, keywords that you already are following, are delivering traffic to specific pages and approximately how much traffic they're delivering based on um, keyword positions for those keywords. Um, what this ultimately means, and in order to provide um, good information to your clients or to, to those who are, um, who are interested in understanding more about what, or, what keywords are driving organic traffic. Um, in order to make that work, it, it be, really will be necessary to follow more keywords, follow more keyword variations to see exactly what keywords um, your site and or your content are being found for. So just to give you a quick example, um, here is the, uh, within the on-site pages, 
um, down at a specific page level. And in this case, again, we're on the Barry Condo team. We're looking specifically at the home page. And under the not provided insight section, um, what this screen is effectively showing us, and I'll, I'll draw your attention down here to the bottom, is all of the keywords um, for which the home page currently has a position in Google, has a recognized position. Um, we're also showing you the monthly search volume for that specific keyword. And then ultimately what we're doing is we're multiplying that search volume by the estimated click-through rate based on known industry averages. So this isn't um, an exact science, unfortunately, but we know that um, the number one position in Google typically accounts for about 36.4% of click-throughs. And so by taking the search volume, multiplying by that amount, we can guesstimate what number of not provided entrants came through this specific keyword and so on and so forth down the line. So when we get down to a keyword that's sitting in the number four position, that estimated click-through rate drops to 7.9%. We multiply that by the number or the monthly search volume, and we arrive at a smaller number that of registrants, or sorry, entrants, who came to the site through Barry Condos for sale, as opposed to Barry Condos. So again, um, in order to come up with a comprehensive list of keywords that are most likely driving content to this page, it'll be necessary to follow a number of keywords and, and keyword variations. Um, again, this is where something like the related keywords tool in the research area might come in handy to identify what those other related keywords are. But ultimately, um, this tool is designed to help you give um, your clients and or yourself some better insight into what keywords are most likely driving traffic. Again, we're never going to 100% definitively know, um, but this is a lot closer than simply you know, kind of raising arms and saying we don't know and, and, and we're not going to try. Um, so this is, uh, this is our, our new tool, uh, our new secure search module. Um, and uh, you know, again, we hope, that, uh, hope our clients find value from it. So moving on, um, which content? So in addition to understanding which keywords we should optimize for. Um, we should also spend some time deciding, you know, well, which specific content should we be focusing on? And the, the rule of thumb here is, is very similar to uh, selecting keywords. Um, generally, our recommendation is find content which is which already has some momentum. In other words, content that's already being found for some of the keywords you're um, attempting to optimize for and being found either on page one or two in Google. Um, and from that, once you've identified that content, then make sure, obviously, that the content is fully optimized for the keywords that you want to be found for. Typically speaking, you know, a single page of content should really be focused around a primary keyword, and this gets back to our, our focus, uh, focus analogy early on. Um, from there, you want to, you know, from a, a content marketing perspective, link this content, link to this content from other internal content within your site or from external sources, so i.e. backlinks, where possible. So build up the authority of that piece of content by linking to it from other sources, again, either your own or external sources. And then, you know, sort of the third step would be to promote this content via social media to encourage social signals. We'd, we'd hope that this page of content already has an easy way for visitors to the page to share it by social media. So, um, you know, there are Facebook follow or like buttons. There are tweet, Twitter, uh, you know, retweet buttons. There's maybe LinkedIn sharing buttons. But in addition to that, take that content and share it socially so that there's an opportunity for uh, your audience to, again, like, share, retweet, comment on that content. And ultimately, those social signals will, will give it um, some, some enhanced um, authority in, in Google's eyes. And you know that's your your way of working towards getting that that content more uh, more found online. So in terms of identifying um, those pages or those those pieces of content that you want to optimize, um, the the best recommendation we can make is to look in the keywords and positions section again. So we're back to that same screen we were for keywords, <clears throat> but in this case, 
Um, we're looking on the right hand side at which page specifically is ranking for any given keyword. Um, in order to accomplish this, you'll want to make sure that up at the top, your positions is set to all so that you're not just looking for the top positions for given keywords. And rather, you're looking at all of the pages that could potentially be ranking or positioned for any given keyword. Because in some cases, you might be looking to cross promote um, pages. You might have a page that's you know, ranking in the number four position for uh, the term fairy condos for sale. There's our home page again. Um, but maybe as you, you scroll down the list, you'll find that there's other pages, either internally or externally, that you can leverage to help boost the authority um, of this of your home page by linking to it from that page. Um, or likewise, you might be looking at you know that other page that's maybe a little bit lower down is another one that you want to try and optimize and build up the authority for and build up the visibility of. Okay, so moving on from um, from content, let's take a look at uh, social keywords. So another um, relatively new component within GShift is our um, social search or social keyword research tool. Um, and effectively, what we're looking to do is is provide again more um, avenues for uh, clients to identify keywords. Uh, this is this can be really thought of in one way as another form of keyword research. Um, because what we're helping to identify is what people and how people are using and searching on Twitter in near real time because you know Twitter's happening in the moment. Um, and how they're how we can use that information and things that are being um, you know broadcast on Twitter to find more keywords. Uh, to find influencers to follow or potentially target with content that you're creating, or to find related content to comment on or to curate um, as part of your, your content marketing strategy. Um, we do have other social networks um, in the pipeline on, in, our, in our roadmap to come. Um, for now, we, we started with Twitter. And I will point out that this is an add-on, uh, an extra cost module uh, within, uh, within the, um, the context of, of G-Shift. Uh, but certainly one, um, you know, as your your online presence or your client's online presence is evolving, that, that you might look to uh, to leverage. And so I'll give you a quick uh, look at what this uh, this module effectively um, looks like. And it's found under the keywords um, uh, and social, uh, or actually, sorry, keywords area. So when you go into any given keyword, there is a set of Twitter options over on the left-hand side, assuming that you have this this Twitter module enabled. And um, so what it's, it's providing is, is a number of different items. Um, first off, the frequency or how many times this keyword, Barry Kondo, has been used on Twitter within, in this case, the last 90 day period. Um, the other piece of information we can provide is, again, what influencers have used this keyword or have tweets appeared uh, with this keyword included in over the last 90 days. Um, again, influencers identifying people online who are talking about the keywords that you want to optimize or want to be found for um, is important. It's important to identify those people. They might be um, certainly people worth following and or people that uh, that might in turn um, follow you and then at some point uh, you know, read, like, share, retweet your content. From a keyword research perspective, um, which is one of the primary focuses here, you'll also see that we'll show associated terms. So terms that were found in close proximity to the term Barry Condo within tweets over the last 90 days. Um, so you might not immediately look, look at this list and say, well, you know, there's some obvious keywords here that, uh, that kind of fit with the keyword phrase that we're, uh, we're interested in following and that we're going to want to follow along with. Um, but you may indeed find that there are some uh, some good, uh, again, nuggets of keywords that, that you should add to your list and start to follow as uh, as part of your uh, your focus. Um, we also look, a uh, popular com uh, uh, concept within Twitter is, is hashtags, identifying hashtags associated with Barry Kondo. So if you're looking at tweeting uh, on behalf of your client, what are some of the hashtags that might help to make that tweet more visible? Um, that will group it with other tweets of, of the same, you know, carrying the same hashtag. 
Um, and then perhaps one of the most uh, exciting pieces from my perspective is identifying content um, that is referenced using that same keyword that you're, uh, you're focusing on. Um, and why that's important is this is content that you may find on Twitter far before it actually gets found or indexed on Google. So if you're looking to curate or repurpose content um, that closely is closely related to you know, content that, that perhaps um, that, that in or around your keyword or, or content that closely relates to the content that you're creating, or again, if it's, it's content that you want to comment on, uh, maybe it's a blog post that you want to comment on or a blog post you want to retweet or, or repurpose from a, from a curation perspective. Um, there's a, you, know, you, you can almost see that immediately based on the keyword phrase that, you're, uh, that you've chosen. Um, and, and you'll be you know, effectively ahead of the game in terms of your, your content marketing strategy, helping your, your, con your, your clients or yourself um, identify that content uh, much more quickly. So last, uh, not least, in terms of um, the, the topics we want to cover today uh, from a, a Google uh, or from a G Chef product perspective is um, backlinks. Which backlinks do we want to follow or what backlink information um, can we gather from G Chef that can help, again, help us establish authority? Um, so first off, uh, a quick statement, backlinks do still matter because I know there's probably a lot of talk, a lot of controversy out there as to whether or not Google even um, still looks at backlinks or more often than not penalizes sites for, for backlinks, uh, for questionable backlinks. Um, the answer to that is that they do still matter, um, but the focus should really be on quality and not quantity. Uh, far too often I, I talk with clients who are concerned because their competitors have far more backlinks than they do. Um, my first comment to them is, let's not pay attention to the number because there's nothing we can do about that. Um, but let's also uh, pay attention to the fact that you know, that client might have 10 times more backlinks, but that doesn't mean those are all good relative quality backlinks. Um, maybe they went out, you know, previously and, and purchased backlinks, which is not a good idea. Uh, maybe they have, you know, um, legacy backlinks that are not doing them any favors, not helping them in terms of, uh, of their authority or their web presence. And maybe those have been flagged by Google as a problem backlinks. So really the, the focus moving forward for anybody who's looking at a backlinking strategy should be on creating relevant or creating backlinks from relevant reputable sources. Um, so there's two places in G-Shift where um, those types of backlinks can be identified. The first being um, simply the top 50 data panel in G-Shift based on, uh, on a keyword by keyword perspective. So take a look at any of your given keywords. And again, I always suggest start with your focus keywords um, and take a look just to see what's in the top 50. What are the, the top 50 results that are returned when people are searching on any given keyword. Um, if there are directories or um, blogs that can be commented on or um, places to advertise, uh, whether free or, or paid, um, those that live within the top 50 by definition are relevant. Google's um, deemed those as relevant results and deem those as good, reputable, potential backlinking sources. The second um, option is to mine competitors' backlinks. And this one takes generally takes a little bit more time depending on how many, again, backlinks your competitors have. Um, also takes a, a, a keen eye to understand which links are coming from reputable, relevant sources. Um, and, and so typically this is a, a manual, uh, sometimes labor-intensive effort but there certainly can be gold found within um, your, your competitors' lists of backlinks. And so let me just give you a quick look again at the, um, the, the two screens that you specifically want to find these backlinking sources in. So the first, as mentioned, is the keywords, um, and specifically within the keyword area. So you're looking at it, any given keyword. Um, over on the left under search engines, you want to go to the top 50 option, um, which is going to provide you with a list of the top 50 results for that keyword which hopefully includes your site or your client's site, um, but also may include, as I've indicated here, any one of a number of potential backlinking sources. Um, these, again, might be either directories, and, and for those of you here in Canada, Kijiji is one that might be familiar. Um, this is a, an online directory, and this is an online blogging site um, specific to the Barry Condo team and, and areas that they might be 
interested in considering for uh, for backlinks again, either either free or obtaining free or or paid backlinks on. The second source as mentioned um, can be found under competitors and backlinks, and specifically uh, here we can choose from the drop down which competitor we'd like to see the list of backlinks for. Again, this can sometimes be quite lengthy. Uh, in this case, we're looking at a competitor with 527 backlinks. Now, there might be a fair bit of repetition here, um, but ultimately, you can go through the list and look, again, for those reputable, relevant backlinking sources, whether they be directories, blogs, or other free or paid advertising opportunities. So this is really an opportunity to potentially back, sorry, piggyback on some of the backlinking sources that your competitors have, uh, have deemed um, important to them. Um, and again, it might be, might be a bit of a manual effort, but certainly a, a valuable resource. So uh, what else is new then in G-Shift? And this is one, uh, what we like to think is, is a relatively exciting announcement for, uh, for ourselves and, and for our, our clients. Um, we now have uh, near real-time keyword position data. So when you add new keywords uh, to your, your G Shift account or within your web presence, um, you'll find that those Google positions will now be available depending on the time of day within a, 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 at the outside 15 minutes or in some cases much less. Um, we've seen instances of keywords showing up in you know, as little as, as four or five minutes, um, depending again on, on the time of day. So um, to facilitate this, and you'll see there's a message that's going to be uh, included when you first add your keywords, um, so they will now be available in, in a much uh, much quicker time period. Um, the way to quickly identify um, any newly added keywords is we've added a drop down here under the change option uh, where you can see your newly added keywords. So if we've added you know, a number of new keywords to our list uh, of keywords that we're following, if we choose the newly added option, we'll be able to quickly see if and where our clients are ranking or our clients' content and, and sites are ranking for those, those new, new keywords we've added. So we hope uh, everybody out there uh, appreciates the, the, the quicker turnaround on results moving forward. Okay, um, so that really uh, wraps up the, the content side of things. Um, I'm going to try and do my best to answer any questions that might have been uh, entered in the chat screen. So let me, uh, let me just jump over there. And, um, you know, if there's anybody uh, who uh, can't stay beyond, I know we've gone a little bit beyond the 30-minute uh, the time limit already. So if anybody that isn't able to stick around, um, certainly, you know, feel free to either contact myself by email or your client success manager, and we'll certainly try to uh, get any of your questions answered. But uh, let me jump over to the questions area just to see if there's any that I can, uh, I can quickly answer here. Uh, bear with me just one second. And it looks like I'm in luck because I'm not seeing any, any questions in the uh, the chat area. Um, I'll certainly stay uh, certainly be online for the uh, for the next couple of minutes. Anybody anyway, if anybody has any uh, any questions that they'd like to. Oh, actually, sorry, there's questions showing up under the questions and answers as opposed to the chat. So let me uh, let me jump there. Um, so, uh, noting that the search volume column isn't showing up uh, for some keywords um, and why, uh, in some cases there, there certainly is a delay and or uh, we don't have those keywords made readily available to us uh, by Google, so we're pulling those directly in from Google. Um, certainly let us know uh, if there are specific keywords that you're, you're looking for the volumes on. Um, that's something we, we pull in through um, the Google Keyword, uh, or sorry, AdWords Keyword Planner. So if there are specific uh, instances of keywords that, uh, that you're not seeing volumes for, um, you know, let your client success manager know and we can, uh, we can work through those with you. Um, just jumping ahead. What guidance can you provide in terms of the percentage or amount of additional keywords to track to get insight into not provided keywords? Um, it's early on in terms of the, uh, the tool, but generally speaking, um, rule of thumb, we'd recommend you know, following, say, 10 keywords 
per page um, or 10 variations of the primary keyword um, per page. And it's, it's obviously going to, you know, help if that page is ranking well. So, you know, in the example I gave previously, uh, we had the, the page sitting at number one for one specific keyword. And so we can use that as the, the sort of the core keyword off of which we can add other related keywords to, uh, to hopefully get a, a better sense of, of what all of that not provided keyword traffic is. And again, I don't believe it's ever going to be 100%, but if we can, you know, get closer and be able to you know, either go back to our clients or, or, or go back to you know um, whoever it is we need to report to on what keywords are driving traffic. Um, then you know if we were to start with say ten and that gets us you know say seventy five eighty maybe ninety percent of the keywords that are most likely driving traffic. Um, I, I think that's that's uh, you know a lot better than again uh, nothing. Um, you know, these days too, because there are so many different long tail ways that people search, um, you know, getting to 100%, I think is, is going to be really difficult. Um, but, you know, if we can get the uh, the majority, as I said, that's uh, that's probably the best we'll, we'll be able to do. And hopefully you'll find that the, the tool gets you, uh, gets you there. Um, question about the keyword um, uh, tool, the associated terms. How are associated terms determined in the keyword Twitter slide? Uh, Twitter recommended G shift algorithm. Actually, those associated terms are terms um, which have been selected. Uh, it's, it's done programmatically in G shift um, as those keywords that are found in close proximity to the keyword phrase and the tweets that were found around that keyword phrase. So we've identified in the, in the example uh, given in the slide um, how many tweets or which tweets were found to have that keyword phrase included in the last 90 days, the associated terms would be those found in or around that keyword within those tweets. So again, um, you know, and similarly, the hashtags uh, are hashtags found in tweets associated where those keywords were, were effectively used. So I hope that, uh, I hope that answers the, uh, the question. Um, question about what's your recommended best practice for actually getting backlinks, reaching out via email, phone calls, gift baskets? <laughs> yeah, uh, great question. Um, uh, in terms of, of best practice, um, uh, yeah, reaching out via email it depends really on the site. Um, like as I said, in some cases, you know, it might be straight out paid or, or free advertising. Um, it, it, you know, for a lot of our clients, it's a matter of establishing um, authority, you know, within an industry or with on a particular topic and generating good quality content, um, you know, convincing um, those that you're looking to get backlinks from that they should link to you and, and you have quality content that they'll, they'll want to link to. Um, I mean, part of, you know, backlink strategy should really be about leveraging social as well. Um, having people retweet and share your content, uh, which hopefully gets picked up by others and and repurposed, uh, you know, as as shared content or curated content on their sites, um, that can generate content or or backlinks for you. Um, you know, backlink uh, strategy is a, is a whole conversation in and of itself. Um, and I actually have, if you're interested, and you want to email me, I do have a uh, backlinks best practices. Um, uh, presentation that I provided uh, a few months ago um, that still holds true, and I'd be happy to, to send that along. So feel free to, uh, to email me, email address there, and um, I can get that along to you. Okay, a couple more questions. Um, the speed is a great improvement. So just a comment. Thank you, uh, Alan. Um, we're, we're happy to have the, the speed improvement in terms of uh, returning uh, keyword positions quicker. So uh, we hope you, uh, you're able to, to leverage that or, or take advantage of that as well. Um, what's the, co the cost of the social add-on? Great question. I'm just going to jump ahead to, I'm going to uh, defer that and, and I'm going to be jumping ahead to uh, that in just a moment. So, uh, let me get back to you on that one. Um, another great comment. Thank you. And I'm just going to get down through these. Uh, will the social media keyword research tool be available a la carte down the road? It certainly may be. Um, yeah, it, it's we've had a lot of great feedback on it, and um, it, it may indeed be uh, something that we offer on its own uh, in the future. I, I can't say uh, definitively right now, but uh, certainly that's a possibility. 
Um, a question about pulling domain authority, showing how reputable incoming domains are. Uh, great comment. Um, I'll certainly pass that along to the product development team um, for, for consideration, um, and, and thank you for that. Um, from a, a product development perspective, uh, we certainly welcome, um, you know, feature requests and, and uh, submissions through our uh, support area within the product. So, uh, you know, if you have others like this, uh, keep them coming. But yeah, in terms of domain authority on backlinks, uh, great suggestion, and uh, we'll take it uh, take it under advisement. Thank you. Um, So a quick question about how can I get G-Shift ranking results to agree closer to what I get when I search for my client's office? Does selecting seven days or 30 days or 90 days affect this? What is closest to the present? Um, unfortunately, I mean, in terms of searching from your client's office, this really depends because what's probably coming into play is the personalization that happens with Google um, in terms of the way they deliver results based on either um, your location, your IP, um, uh, Potentially, um, if you're logged into Google, that's going to affect um, what rankings you see when you do a search through through a regular browser. Um, what I can suggest is um, if you can do a search through a um, a, a non uh, non localized IP address through a proxy. That's that's one way. Um, make sure within the the product as well. Uh, and I guess this is assuming that you're you're leveraging our our local um, search results. Uh, um, feature set within the product. Um, if you can choose the local or the closest local city um, or area to your client, that might that might very well help in terms of providing uh, local results that are that are closer. Um, and if you you know want some further uh, detail, feel free to, to email me offline on that, and uh, and I can try and get that answered for you uh, in a little bit more detail. All right. So uh, last couple of questions. Okay, so it's not personalization and they're not logged in. Um, yeah, just in the interest of time, maybe Richard, if you wanted to uh, to email me, we could uh, we could um, you know, kind of discuss this further, or we could take a, a specific look at at your situation and um, see if we can help to uh, to approximate the the results to uh, to better fit what you're you're looking to accomplish. Okay, so I think that's all of the questions, and I'm, I'm looking at the clock, so I want to uh, to kind of get through. I know again we've gone well over the 30 minutes that we'd originally. Uh, we advertise. So uh, just a couple of uh, screens left. So if you can uh, bear with me just one moment. Um, somebody had a question about the social keyword research module. Um, we've got a couple of offers here I wanted to, uh, to share. Um, the first being um, basically the pricing on the social keyword research module, assuming uh, you already have the, um, the social uh, solo mo bundle that we're offering is, is $100 uh, basically extra charge. Um, it is a fairly um, labor resource intensive tool. So the way we've um, set it up for now is that there's five keywords that can be followed or included, and that includes um, 5,000 tweets per month. Um, any keywords above or beyond that, those initial five keywords are five dollars um, per keyword. Um, but you know, certainly reach out to um, to uh, sales at GShift Labs. Uh, dot com or or to your client success manager and they can discuss uh, kind of what your specific needs are in terms of leveraging the uh, the social uh, keyword research tool and and how we can uh, you know come up with uh, with some pricing that that best fits uh, you know your your budget. Um, the other thing I wanted to mention is just our our referral program uh, for anybody who's not familiar. Um, we uh, we do offer a five percent referral fee for any new business referred to G Shift. So uh, so do keep that in mind and. Um, you know, uh, we'd be uh, we'd be uh, very pleased to receive any referrals that you might have, um, and we'll uh, we'll look to uh, compensate you accordingly for that. Uh, last but not least, I just wanted to uh, let you know that uh, we will have another uh, client success webinar next month. Um, the topic uh, there will be optimizing for local search, and I'm sure there's uh, there's a lot of people out there who would be uh, interested in that topic. So. Uh, be sure to watch for the uh, the invite. Um, that'll be coming out, uh, you know, in or around a week before. Um, generally speaking, these webinars are, are the third week of, of every month, so watch for that invite. And um, we'll certainly look forward to uh, anybody who is able to attend. Um, that being said, um, reached the end of my time. Uh, again, I appreciate everybody's patience as I've gone a little bit over uh, 
what had previously been advertised, but uh, hopefully you got uh, some good value out of uh, the uh, discussion today. And uh, thank you again very much for, for all of your time. Um, any follow-on questions, feel free to uh, email myself, reach out to uh, any of the other members of the, uh, the client uh, success team, um, or certainly to, uh, to Sales of G-Shift Labs, and we'd be happy to, uh, to get any questions that you have um, better answered and fully answered uh, moving forward. So thank you again. Have a great day. Bye-bye.